Anybody else used to steal extra little crackers during communion? Just me? That was not just me, because I was hungry as shit sometimes. And how the fuck they going now? God? So I'm trying to be a sub, but, you know, my page isn't private anymore. So, like, I unprivated it after I quit teaching. So now I'm trying to see, like, am I going to be able to do this? But, um... Keeping all options open. My recent ghoul search. <laughs> ghoul search. <laughs> the crazy thing is, I found a joint that pays 60 per hour. But... You got flirt. I don't know how to flirt. And I feel like the people that I'm talking to will know I don't know how to flirt. Because I just won't respond correctly to certain shit. And they'll be like... I think I want to get, like, a boom box. You know, and a mic and just like go out on the street to sell my books and just like read certain parts of my books. But you got to afford a boom box. You know what I'm saying? I learned about teaching. I give life to my students. But I'm realizing that I also give a different type of life because I want to say at least 98% of the guys I used to talk to have children now. Like as soon as they stop talking to me, ciao. So, I haven't smoked in, it was almost two days, but yesterday I was like, when Lonnie recorded that video, and was like, when it's time to fucking go, I definitely like hit a J, but real quick and not really high. I'm reflecting, and even though I'm not the same person that I used to be, I just wish that I would have charged niggas more for like my conversation, my services, tutoring, uh, females as well. Uh, I just feel as though like, People that weren't genuinely, like, it was a dialogue, but it was more of just, like, they were negating my energy or draining me. I wish I would have charged for my fucking services. Because, like, look at me now. I have a bachelor's. I'm working on my associates. Um, I quit my job to drop a mixtape. To be, to be a creative. I'm learning that word. Um, I started spoken word. A year ago, I've written two books. I'm trying to have a rapping career. And it's like, I just feel as though, like, I didn't do this in the right order. Like, I know in God's plan, it was the right order. Because what I'm saying wouldn't have happened had it not happened in this order. But I'm saying in a sense of the, the doubt, the underestimating. I mean, of course, like one day people going like really hear me but it's like that I can't I can't tell the people that I need to pay my bills with like you know what I have this amazing book it is going to change people's lives once they start reading it I'm just you know trying to get them to see what's in it you know um I have great music no it's not out there yet um and I am not charging for it yet, but this it's coming. Um, can I pay my bills with my hopes and dreams? No? Okay, so we still have to figure out this financial thing. Um, yeah, uh, do you need a tutor? I could be a tutor for a lifetime. No, no, you're n people don't pay for tutors. Um, you could gamble your money on me. It's a win-win. It's a win. I am going to do something. Positive. Don't, go, don't, don't go to gamble at a casino. Gamble here. I have so much to offer you. So much. So many skills. So many talents. Spend it here. You know what I'm saying? I'm just so like discombobulated. You know, but it's okay. It's okay. Because one day, oh, it's free. One day, I just figured out something I'm going to do. Ha! See? Good ideas come just like that. But one day, one day, one day, didn't even freestyle. And <laughs> I'm not done. Uh, I don't want to do gimmicks. Like, I, I'm not really into, like, gimmicky shit, like, to to build hype and I know that's like kind of the times we're in but I I want everything to be authentic like it's just like if it's not something that I couldn't have seen myself doing before 
I started my career, I I don't want to do it. Oh, this R and B. I mean, it's not good R and B, but is this R and B? Like, was they mentored by Jacquees? Is that his name? See, I don't even know none of these niggas. My point is just like, give a real nigga a chance. You feel me? I've been in everybody's DMs if they started making music from the seventies to the mid two thousands. Um, if I remember anybody new, I slide in those DMs. Um. I mean, I personally have been DM DMing a lot of people since before I quit teaching, but you know, like now it's different. I just, to be truthfully honest, I just feel as though like, how do you go from being a teacher to a rapper? Like, I wish that there was a build your fan base. Who who were the people that listened to you when you were in your other career? Oh, you mean my students? Um, well, you know, I sometimes talk about vaginas and penises and what happens when they come together. And I personally don't think that it would be uh, the best for their old math teacher to promote such things, you know. So, um, no, I cannot. <laughs> I actually would have at least like 400 people guaranteed that could, uh, you know, be fans. But no, no. I want to say I sized it, but I definitely like started really teaching when I moved to Philly, well, tutoring in 2010. So it's like I've tutored and taught over 400 people. There's a lot of people I've taught over the years, at least up until now. It's at least 90 kids per year. That's already like 270. So I taught four years. That's 360 shot. Okay. Hmm. I be reflecting and it's like, I think it's interesting that God keep putting me into situations where I kind of got to be the trailblazer and do different shit. Like I, I, for five years, I was the only black girl in all my classes. Well, my core classes, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm in carpentry. Um, how many black female carpenters, you know, top, put that on top of how many female black mathematicians, you know, and I'm not saying math teacher. Cause I hate when people do that shit and think that my degree is in education. That's different. And I'm not trying to belittle it. It's different. Like I would have known more about the psychology of children before entering into the classroom. And I did not. So, um, when I say like, I took modern geometry, modern algebra, uh, real and complex analysis, one and two pro, uh, probability theory, number theory, I actually fucking love that class. Um, Differential equations. Like, I need people to understand I went there and then I'm bringing this back and I'm sharing some deep ass information that's not even mathematical sometimes. I mean, unless we think in logic. But it's just, I got all these jewels and I said it, oh, oh, I say it in my book. I said like, I'm giving out like gold plated jewels to every person I encounter, but they throwing that shit away because I put it in a Ziploc bag. It's like, bitch, I was trying to keep it like in good condition. You know what I'm saying? But you worried about the Ziploc bag. What it, I guess if I would have put it in like a little sparkly ass box, then you would like it. No. Ziploc bag type shit. You feel me? And it's just so unfortunate because it's like... <sighs> It's about to be like a year from now. And then people will be like, oh my God. Like, It's like, thank you for all the people that have been hip. Thank you for all the people that have been supporting. Thank you. Because that's literally like all that's been pushing me at this point. Because where I came from, I didn't believe in myself. So had I not had those people that actually believed in me too, who knows where I would be? Who knows? I had to do some homework. Um, last post in response to that. I had a student tell me that they smoked before. I've had several students, but like it was like a dialogue, is what I'm saying. Um, and basically, not being a hypocrite, right? Because she was just like, I just was going through a lot, and I just I smoked because like I I didn't want to cry no more. And it's like, shot, I've been there. I wasn't in the eighth grade. But I was there. So it's like, I can't tell a child, like, don't smoke. I'm literally waiting to re-up. So that that's not the advice. What I did tell her is, though, in those moments where you feel like you need to smoke, what I would suggest is cry, 
write down what you're going through, talk to somebody about what you're going through. And then if that still has to happen, cool, but you're not running to smoke whenever you have an issue. You're actually dealing with, again, I can't go into all the logistics because it's already in my books, but the, sorry, I scared myself. Basically, when you are depressed, it happens, right? We live in a society that is, it's depressing as fuck. No matter where you go, something depressing is going to happen. That just is what it is, and it's not by accident. When you are depressed, pay attention to the unhealthy, maladaptive, meaning bad, behaviors that you have learned over time, right? And when you start doing those, then you have to say, hmm, how can I shift the behavior? So for me, for example, I used to smoke to stop crying. Um, I used to not eat. Hmm. Speaking of that, I should eat because that's one of my maladaptive behaviors. Um, I have a method of self-harming. I never cut myself like in that sense. I'll speak of, I'm not at that place now to speak about that part of my issues. Um, masturbation, overly sexual, not like in my words, just fucking a lot. Um, all of those things, like whenever I want to do that, I have to say like, ooh, pause, take a step back, Tasia. What's going on? Like, what, you, you feeling some type of way? Your feelings hurt? You sad? What you need to talk about, girl? Like, get it out. And then usually, if I really put a pencil to paper, my little girl will start talking. Something I've realized is for many people, you go through life so long where it seems as though no one else really cares that in effect, you stop caring. So you're less likely to put that pencil to the paper because you don't really want to know what you're going through because you are content at the place that you are with not having to acknowledge all your past traumas, which is fine. Like, I, I I have become a total advocate for for you do not have to heal your traumas. That is your choice. Me personally, I am looking for like love and I want to be able to love in the healthiest way possible. I personally was given a glimpse and I'm just like now on a soul search to find that feeling again. So my thing is I want to be a healthy person. I don't want anybody to say that I was loving them in an unhealthy way. And I want to know how to receive it and be receptive and recognize it. So that requires me to acknowledge all that shit. All those lies I told myself as a child. You know what I'm saying? Like, you wonder why this shit's so long? All of this is like me trying to decipher through what is real and what is fake. What is reality and what is my imagination? What is the truth and what is a lie that I told myself because my father left me? Or not left me, my father just wasn't around. Like, I know that nigga. Um, Like, because I allow guys to use me. Yo, it's some pieces in my second book where, like, I literally wrote letters to guys that I fucked with that I like blamed for treating me like shit or I really liked but I never told them and it's just oh my god that's why I'm scratch I'm like why is my back so itchy I'm revealing shit and I scratch when I'm like going deep um but yeah it's just it's it's so powerful when you can really like step in front of your traumas like because when 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 your traumas control you they're leading but when you go through them, you are now in front of them. And when you own your traumas, that shit is like heavy. And I am at a place where I don't want to be spazzing because somebody called me a millennial or somebody called me pretty or somebody touched my ass or looked at my ass or commented on my ass. Like I have so many fucking triggers and I can't live like that because I'd be spazzing for the rest of my life. And I used to tell my students that. And it's like when you give somebody the power where they can say something to disturb your spirit. Now, I'm not saying words don't matter. I'm just saying to the point where it disturbs your spirit to the point where you're not able to say like, that ain't got shit to do with me. That's something deeper inside of them. That to me is when you have to heal yourself. But again, it is your choice to heal. You are not required to heal. Live your life however you choose. But me, I am choosing to heal. I refused to let my traumas, I realized emotionally and cognitively I was incongruent. 
My little girl versus my woman. My heart wanted love. My mind knew I needed more. My heart wanted love. And for the first time, my mind realized how I could become congruent. For the first time, I realized I could give myself what I always wanted. Unconditional love. My flawed little girl and confused woman. They needed this. I was appreciating both sides of me. Impervious. No longer can you transfer your traumas to me. You hear that, bitch? It's like, no, I'm just-